Well, good morning, everybody. It's really quiet uh, Sunday at Barber, and got really busy towards the end of the day yesterday. I didn't film a whole lot of stuff. I really need a second person to do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, from like 4.30 to 8.30 p.m., it's just thrashing on a bunch of different cars for different reasons. And uh, anyway, yeah, we're still set up right here. And it's going to be a beautiful day. And uh, this is the quiet before the sports car storm. And, uh, yep. <laughs> Getting ready to do uh, tire rotation left to right. <clears throat> Make sure we keep these Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s sticky and not corded. <laughs> All right. Beautiful C7 Z06. And the guy that drives this car does not play around. It's fast. He's fast. Yeah. All right. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Uh, it's like 7 a.m. and uh, today we're in Smyrna, Georgia. Smyrna, Smyrna, something like that. Uh, takes forever to get daylight, but so today uh, we're doing a mobile track car preparation service for a customer. And uh, yeah, so it's a Subaru WRX STI. And uh, we're going to do a full set of Hawk brake pads and uh, change the cabin air filter and the uh, engine air filter. And I uh, just do a full brake inspection, check the fluid and everything like that. And um, yeah, so about to get started doing Hawk uh, HPS street pads in the front and the uh, street 5 0 patch for the rear. And then there's the uh, cabin and engine air filter. And uh, yeah, here's the car. Try to give you a shot of it. It's a really nice dark gray color. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to be quiet because not everybody is awake yet. Only Corsa crew is awake because we come at any hour, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but yeah, so. Anyway, about to get started on this and knock it out. And yeah, those aren't race pad, race brake pads, but um, you know, he's not. The car is not modified with extra power or anything like that. So, just want to do a little bit of a street track uh, brake upgrade. That's kind of what we're doing today. So, anyway, uh, we'll get started and check back in a little bit. All right. So here's the front. Um, looks like you just got to take out. Uh, these two pins and then remove the uh, brake pad uh, guidance plate and I don't know what's going on with these little guys oh, I guess you gotta probably gotta pull these pins out first then then tap these through and once you have all that out uh, the pad should pull out this way and then uh, once you got the pads out you'll be able to see the, the pistons here and here and there and there and uh, what you'll we'll have to do is make sure those pistons are pushed back in further uh, because the new pads will be quite a bit thicker in order to get them in you gotta get the pistons uh, pushed in so all right let's not that we have that first pin out there and uh, I take the second one out it kind of takes a little bit of uh, persuasion there we go there got that one out too and uh, now we'll knock the pins out. And I'm uh, just gonna use this little guy, the hammer, and uh, I'll show you how to do that. Like that, and we're gonna tap that thing right through the back. All right. Yeah, give it a good smack the first time. <clears throat> Alright, so here's a little trick. Take your fingers and push down on this plate in the front, and you can just pull the pins right out of the back. Oh, you don't have to keep smacking with a hammer. 
And then what I always do is now that this is loose, pull the bottom pin, drop it, and this piece, make sure you, you know it goes like this. So I just lay it on the ground uh, like that. So I know that when I pick it up, it just goes just like that. All right, so now uh, you can just kind of, what I always do is, uh, let's see, can you see my hand? Yeah. So <clears throat> you want to grab the pad with your hand and try to force force it in towards the pistons just a little bit like that. All right, so I want to show you guys something real quick. The other pads out, you can see uh, that the pistons on the closer to me are pushed in pretty far, uh, but these in the back are not. So here's a little trick. You know, grab the pad and just kind of wiggle it back in there. And what you can do is use the old pad to move the pistons over so you know once you have it out about this far you can literally take your hand and push back like this and it will push the pistons back all right so we've got our new pad here and once you've got the pistons uh, pushed all the way back where you need them you can go ahead and just take that pad and just kind of slide it down into place there and of course you'll do the same with this one, just push the pistons in all the way with the other old pad and uh, slide the new one in. Um, and it might take a little bit of uh, for dangling when you get the new pad in. Um, you may have to, like once these pistons are far enough to get it started, you get it down and maybe take the new pad and kind of push them in the rest of the way. And it should slide right down in there. Once you're done with the pad install, um, you'll take this plate you know, and flip it back up here like this and I'll show you you'll start uh, one pin through and uh, get it pinned down and you push down here start the other pin through all right so uh, once you got it that first pin in at the bottom you know you just start it line it up and uh, tap it through with the lightly tap it with the hammer it doesn't take much force uh, the next thing you want to do is you're holding this one here push down and you can see that uh, now I have enough room to slide that pin through and uh, once you get it, you just hold this down with one finger and slide the pin through here. Uh, get it lined up with these holes and then tap it through with the hammer and uh, you're done with this side. And uh, also this is the front. Forgot to mention that. Don't forget to put your uh, locking pins back in here. Alright, so the rears uh, are very similar to the front. So the same thing, you got these pins that you have to knock through. And of course the first thing you want to do is take out um, these little guys first, the little little pins that you got to get out of there. So make sure you remove those first, then you can tap these through, and then uh, this plate will come out. And uh, same procedure as the front, you know, you'll just push the pad in and in this way, and um, then remove the old pads, uh, make room for the new ones by pushing the pistons all the way in, and then uh, reverse the process. Uh, one note I want to make is make sure that uh, this car recently had a full brake fluid flush so just use some paper towels or if you want you can have a little uh, vacuum vacuum a little bit of the brake fluid out not too much uh, because when you push those pistons in uh, that they make room for the pads it will force the fluid uh, out of the reservoir since uh, the old pads were pretty much worn out and uh, these are these are like this thick the new ones the old ones are like this and so the fact that your pistons are moving in much further forces the fluid back up the reservoir just a little pro tip so uh, the CV is back down on the ground and the brake pad installation is complete <clears throat> uh, so the next step is to go drive this thing and burnish the pads in uh, and while we're here, we're going to take the stock air filter out. It's a little bit used. You know, just maybe a little bit. And we're going to put a brand new K&N high flow air filter in place of it. The replacement is really simple. Uh, you've got these two clips here. Unplug your mass air flow sensor. And uh, I just kind of push it apart like this and kind of wiggle the air filter out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put the K&N in here. 
And after that, uh, go for a test drive. I wanted to uh, show that you have uh, on the bottom of any Hawk brake pad box, you have the burnishing procedure. So installation and then burnishing instructions. So even on the street pads, make sure you follow these instructions. What's up guys? Good morning from Road Atlanta. This is uh, Saturday and uh, we're set up as we usual. And uh, we've got the free air station right over here. You can see people kind of stopping to get some air. Uh, first thing this morning is a full brake fluid flush with some Castrol SRF. Uh, this is a 2008 Porsche 911S. Beautiful color. I love the, the gray, but we're getting ready to do a full brake bleed on this, get him back out there, and uh, things are heating up. Literally, it was really cool this morning, so uh, I'll try to get around the paddock here in a little bit. Um, look at that, what a beauty. Um, yeah, so the classroom is where the, where the fuel station is across the way. Uh -huh. uh, if you drive out where you came in. Uh, you see that fuel station yeah. right there? That's a, yeah, the blue roof. Yeah, and the kind of orange that Van is the buildings right yep. to the left of it. Okay. All right. You gotta drive out and you go around. Or you yeah. walk over that bridge. Go where? I'm sorry. You gotta go back out. Alrighty. So, anyway, giving some directions to the classroom and getting ready to get rolling. I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Hopefully, we'll get to go around the paddock and see. This is uh, this is the Porsche Club Peach State. So a lot of a lot of some sick Porsches here today. So, all right, we'll see you later. All right, you got the brake fluid right there? Yeah, it's, uh, Okay. this one is the uh, partial can. It's good stuff. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, let me get started on it. Uh, probably take, uh, this one's gonna take, a, to do the full thing, maybe an hour, 45 minutes. I'll try to hurry though on it, yeah. All right, just finished up full brake fluid flush on the Cayman S, and we're about to do the same on the, uh, the M3 right here, so here we go. What's his face here? Raceworks. Yeah, so that one right there is straight. And this one. Yeah, that one was definitely bent. You know these guys in race Huh. Not straight. That's a big piece. Yeah. That's this whole assembly. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It's not just right an there attachment. On the other side so. Oh, so that's the hub assembly then. It's right down yeah. the left hand side. Well, we're back live here at Road. Atlanta. Just kidding. I was that was my mark from Chin Track Days impression. Was it pretty good? Leave a comment below if I could do better. Uh, so we're about to go work on a uh, Cayman GTS4. In other words, it's a Cayman race car, and I got a fan that has overheated. Well, the fan didn't overheat, but the uh, the wiring did. So let me show you. So. Had some bad boo boo there, and I, it looks like it just got too hot. You got a 40 amp fuse right here, and uh, it was mounted in this area. You see right here where it got hot and melted the plastic, but it did not touch the metal in anywhere. So in other words, it just overheated. So what I'm going to do is chop this thing up and replace the wires and uh, hook it back up, see if it overheats. So, all right, uh, you got a number. Uh, E90, well, it's the E90 M3. Okay, perfect. Uh, I need it till tomorrow morning. Need it till tomorrow morning? Yeah. Okay. I'm, this is my, I'm gonna be a YouTube video. So oh, yeah. I, I try to film all the cars that are here oh, and everything, cool. yeah. So, this sees us now. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll try to, I'll try to dig into it and get the, um, okay. and get the fan out, see if I can put a battery to it. And if the fan fires up and works, Okay, it's not the fan, but if it doesn't work, I'll try to go see if I can get one at a store and then replace it. So okay, cool. That's what because we'll do. Because that switch here is supposed to go directly to the fan. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I just turn it on. <laughs> oh, this looks awesome. Thank you. He's gonna be a busy guy. About you guys. It's time for the social. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
It's a GT350. Letting us hear the song of their people. So, um, when a customer says, hey, I want you to finish my car. See ya. But also, I want to get a beer. Would you like a beer? You say yes, because that's called customer satisfaction. Oh, yeah. Check that out. Catch and release seasonal. It's a peach beer. It's like a peach with goggles and wings that goes under the ocean or something. It's not bad. It doesn't have quite as much peach flavor as I would like, but hey, it tastes great after a long day. So, all right, let's get back to it. Things got a bit rocky. <laughs> so this is what happens when you go in the rock pit. It's all right. I'm gonna get it all cleaned up. Got the brakes bled out. Inspected everything. Uh, this car will be ready to go back on track here shortly. Cool. Yeah, Mm. Sometimes we work on race car Mustangs at night. The Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. Yep. So the power bleeder. Couldn't use it. I bought the Ford adapter. And uh, it looks like it fits. It doesn't fit. It's too big. And I tried the regular one. It doesn't fit either. So I had to get someone to come help me manually bleed everything out but uh looks like we got it done here's a shot of the old intake i think this is like a boss 302 or actually i think it's just a mustang gt with some some track modifications to the max but uh yep gonna button this thing up and uh i've got to look at a fan on that cayman over there and see what's going on and then I think I'm gonna call it a night uh, here at the beautiful Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. I don't know why I like to say it like that. Uh, anyway, so it's been a long day with the Porsche Club, Peach Tree, Peach State. I can't, I can't ever remember which one is which. Uh, after a day like this, I can't, I don't know how to remember anything. But anyway, good fun. Got a lot of cars back on the track and. Uh, tomorrow we got some customers coming in the morning to do some more stuff and uh, a couple of customers that are going to come by during the week to get some track prep done uh, soon or actually I'm I'm going to them we're doing the mobile service where we drive to their place and, and take care of everything so uh, this is what it looks like when you do something you love and to other people they don't love it so it looks like hard work and why would you be doing that and all this stuff well you do what you love, you're able to work a lot harder, a lot easier, I say. So, anyway, I'm out. Good night. Today, for the weekend, and packed up, and the uh, Insta teams are getting ready. And, uh, you can see the force team here getting their support rig ready. Yeah, one day Corsa crew will be that big, huh? <laughs> I hope so. Here's the Ford team okay. and uh, 404 racing with the GPs. Up here you got Lexus. So it's good stuff. Leaving old, good old road Atlanta with the Porsche Club, and it uh, looks like uh, the teams are coming in to practice. So there's Lexus and got Cadillac's uh, prototype team here as well. And that's a really sick ride there. Whew. All right, and anyway, we're headed out. So really busy weekend with the Porsche Club of Georgia, uh, Peach State. And uh, we had a great time supporting them and their drivers. Uh, got to meet a lot of uh, cool new people, which is always one of that's really the best part of, of coming out. And uh, anyway, just to recap, 
uh, we were able to get everybody back on track and functioning except for uh, two cars which required a really in-depth repair that really can't perform at the track um, and you know uh, rented out a lot of GoPros to some people that really enjoyed uh, having the video and everything so that was wonderful that uh, they could have that experience and what else let's see uh, learned a little bit about some Porsches that haven't ever worked on before some older ones so that was nice to have a little learning experience there and really enjoyed it uh, everybody at the Porsche Club I'd like to give a big thanks for them letting us come out and support their drivers and a big thanks to the drivers uh, for coming to see us and uh, and working with us it's really a great experience and we love it so thank you guys see you later